I thought about it. Joby tripod is garbage. It is pure junk. This, look at this thing. This thing is missing two pieces of my leg. This thing is missing. It, it's just, it doesn't hold very well. Like it's very loosey goosey. And yet I'll probably still go to Best Buy and pick up a 5K or 3K Joby tripod. Link down below in my description. If you guys want it, I don't know. But if you do, just make sure you get like three or four because they're not very reliable. Hey, I should probably thank you for watching today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm John and Q. Welcome to the channel. Usually my intro is like, what is up guys and welcome back to the John and Q channel. Thanks so much for watching. Both intros are in the video, whatever. This is not a sponsored anything for Joby because I just ripped on him. So, but Joby, if you wanna, hey, if you wanna bring one over here and give it to me, mail it to me, ah, uh, that'd be great. Anyway, enough of the rant. Let's get into the video. Let's get right into what you came for and that's what are the best settings for a YouTube video when you're filming yourself? So lately I've been getting emails and comments on my video quality and how I get what I get with the YouTube video. What it takes for me to get this picture quality, to get this level of quality on my YouTube video. And really it's, it's very simple. It's camera and settings and natural light. Those three things essentially create the vibe of my videos, create the color of my videos, and it's honestly not that hard to recreate or for you guys to use in your videos. What I use is the Canon 60 Mark II, which is what I'm using right now with the Canon 16 to 35 millimeter lens, 2.8 L version three. That is a mouthful. And I also use the Rode microphone. The gear that I use will be in, in the description below for you guys to actually buy yourselves for you guys to check out. And so the way that I set up my actual settings on my camera is this. Okay, let's focus. So this is, these are the settings that I use for my actual filming of YouTube, especially when it comes to uh, just vlog style outside, indoors, etc. First, I will make sure to set my frame rate to 24 frames a second. That actually brings me the most cinematic look, the most film-like look, if you will, to my videos. You want to set your shutter speed double the frame rate that you're using. So because I'm using 24, you probably want to be at 50 or 60. In this specific scenario, I'm using 80 for my shutter speed in video. And then here we have 2.8 uh, aperture. Now this is pretty important only because to get that shallow depth of field, and when I say shallow depth of field, I mean look at how I'm in focus and how the back how the background is out of focus. It's got that blurry, creamy effect that everybody likes. When you change the actual depth of field to let's say 3.2, 3.4, 5.6, that means more in the image will be in focus. I apologize if I'm like kind of crooked. Again, this is junk and it broke, so. And that's what I do for my shutter speed. I like the shallow depth of field, so when I'm running and gunning, kind of doing this kind of setup, kind of like running, hey guys, welcome back to the John and Q channel, thanks so much for watching. You get me and my face in focus more so than the background, hoping that the background will be blurry and get have that creamy look that I, I like to my videos. Again, it's all preference, you can change that. Like right now, I will change it to, let's say 5.6. So to do that, what you would do is this. What you would do is you would go to your settings to fix the aperture and you would want to make sure, let's see here. This, once I change that wheel, this 2.8 number will change. As I'm changing the wheel, it will change. So now I'm at 5.6, which means my picture will be getting more dark. It'll be getting darker, but not too dark. So let's, let's see this. And we'll get into the actual darkness and brightness uh, very soon when it comes to ISO. So when I'm actually doing the vlog kind of selfie thing, as you can see, I'm at 5.6. More of the background and me is in focus, but it gets darker, which is the next point, And that comes to ISO. Be a lot easier if I had a Joby tripod that actually worked. So I'm actually going to go back to 2.8 right there, because that's the way I like that's the way I like my videos to look. It looks just, the color looks really good. The shallow depth of field is there. Again, creamy. And lastly, I fix the ISO. Now this is super important uh, for those who vlog indoors and outdoors. For outdoors, it is vital for me to use my camera at ISO 100. And I say that because ISO pretty much gives you artificial brightness to your picture. 
And if you're out here in the natural light, you don't need the artificial light. Now, why would you not need more light? Why would you need a base ISO of 100 and not more? Well, because we're outside and it's light. It's light out, like there's, the sun is right there. So if I were to give you more ISO, it would look like this. So what I do to change that is go to my respective button for ISO, which is right here. I click that and I just drag it plus or minus. Now, if I was at 800 ISO, this is what my picture would look like. And honestly, that doesn't look very good. If I was inside shooting, this potentially could look really good because there's not enough light. There's not, you know, light coming in. If I have actual studio lights, that could work. And then I would set it back to a lower ISO. The more ISO you have in your picture, the more likely it is to actually have grain and, you know, that really grainy, noisy look that you don't really want. So let's set this back to 100. Ah, oh, that's better. And as you can see, the picture looks so good to me. Uh, and hopefully it looks good to you guys on screen. The only thing that I don't like about this specific picture right now is this. This whole highlight just being blown out. I do have an ND filter on here, but I'm trying to rotate it to see if I can get anything. You know, and I'm still, I'm at 2.8, which is a shallow depth of field. I'm at 80 shutter speed, and I'm a base ISO of 100. So there will be more light blown out in the back, but for this sake, I do like this picture, and it is okay to use this. Now, if I were to turn around and do this, if I were to go to, let's say, something like this. Whew. If I were to be somewhere like this, right, where it's a little darker, and my whole background, my whole image has changed, what do I do now? And I'll see if I can do it with <laughs> with no hands available. I would keep it at 2.8. Since I want that shallow depth of field, I don't want it to get darker. I would keep the aperture the way it is at 80. And I would honestly only change the ISO. So again, and I'll just drag that to add some more artificial light because what we just had said was that ISO gives you artificial light. Well, now we move to somewhere dark. Now, what do we want? Artificial light. And already you can see the picture looks a lot better versus versus this where it's, you know, it's okay, but it, I don't want to fix this in post because then I actually start ruining the footage. I'll go to my ISO and boost it to 250. And even though I'm outside with natural light, this gives it a little bit more of a better look. And you can fix this in post if you want as far as color correcting and adding more contrast and less highlights from the bag that are being blown out. Okay, so let's go back to the other station where I like it even better. Okay, I will set this on my backpack because, well, the Joby tripod sucks. We are in more light and that's more light available. I go back to ISO of 100 and here it is. And as you can see on my meter, my exposure meter, we are pretty much perfectly exposed for this setting and this scenario. So what I have done is actually done really well as far as exposing everything from ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. So there you guys have it. Just a quick overview on how I actually set my settings for when it comes to the vlog style filming on YouTube. Now, if we were indoors, that would be a different story. If we were lighting for an interview, that would be a different story. My settings would kind of flip-flop. But the main thing that you want to make sure and you want to pinpoint is if you're outside, ISO should be lower because you have natural light. Now ISO gives you artificial light. Aperture, actually I'm gonna go over here because it's getting actually pretty windy and I don't want that noise to be in there. Now for aperture, if you want a shallow depth of field and you want more focus in the front and more blur in the back for that creamy bokeh, I would bring down that aperture to about 2.8, you know, 3.6, and that could still give you some shallow depth of field. And if you're shooting in 24 frames a second, I would double your shutter speed. So if you're shooting in 24, try to shoot at 50 or 60 or 80. If you go higher than, than that, then that would be pretty bad because if I were to bump that shutter speed, you would get so much motion blur, kind of like saving Private Ryan feel, and I don't think you'd want to go for that. And if you're shooting, if you're trying to shoot for slow motion, shooting 60 frames a second and then double that, that'd be 120 shutter speed and then fix for when you go back to 24. So hopefully that helps you guys maneuver your vlogs and your interview style 
uh, videos when it comes to you making them and creating them. Hopefully this gives you kind of more in depth look into how I do things uh, on the camera. It's just those three things. And hopefully you guys get out there, you guys keep on creating. Uh, let me know if this helps in the comments below and everything I mentioned as far as camera, uh, there's even <laughs> the Joby tripod will be down in the, in the links in my description below. So please check those out if you want to purchase them. And with that being said, I'll catch you next time on the Johnny Q channel. Peace. Okay, Joby tripod. Like, <laughs> this is, this is ridiculous, this is just, ah, uh, okay, well, cool.